Okay, so here we are at our tutorial on uh, the active band pass filter. Okay, so as we had learned in the previous tutorials that uh, you can basically construct a band pass filter uh, by cascading low pass and high pass filter stages. Okay, much like the uh, block diagram I'm showing over here. So here you need basically, uh, now since it's an active band pass filter we're going to discuss here, so you'll obviously need an uh, active high pass and low pass filter stages. Okay, so let's just first connect uh, an active high pass filter. I just wrote here HPF in short. And then if you have, uh, well, an active low pass filter over here. Uh, there you go. So there you go. That's the active low pass filter. Now you just cascade these stages together and whatever you get, okay, so this entire thing, uh, including the active high pass and the active low pass uh, filters together, that's your active band pass filter. So this entire thing becomes the active band pass filter. Okay, I just write, write that down over here. All right, so there you go. Fine, so here we're gonna apply the uh, input signal. Okay, let's just consider it VI, which is always, uh, I mean, it, it would obviously be a, uh, you know, an AC signal, okay, at the input. Uh, and obviously from here, we're gonna have the output taken uh, from this particular terminal, okay? So this entire circuit using these filter stages together uh, within uh, the dotted lines, okay, that just serve as our active band pass filter. Right, and now we know that, uh, well, an active filter, I mean an active uh, high pass filter basically, has a cutoff frequency uh, known as the lower cutoff frequency, okay? And the active low pass filter has a cutoff frequency known as the upper cutoff frequency, or rather, uh, denoted with the symbol FH. Right, so it's always uh, a necessary condition uh, in order to, uh, you know, construct a band pass filter. We always need to have the upper cutoff frequency of the active high, I mean, of the active low pass filter, okay, greater than that of the lower cutoff frequency of the active high pass filter. Only then can we. I mean, basically, uh, obtain a common band, okay, a common range of frequencies that both the filters would just allow to pass. Now, with this, we can basically obtain uh, a frequency characteristic, okay, say so here's a frequency axis, that's the x, and if we would just basically uh, plot the, um, let's say, the output over here, then we're going to get, uh, or rather, uh, the gain, okay, if we would just plot the gain, that's the let's just consider the uh, overall gain of this entire bandpass uh, filter circuit. So then its uh, frequency characteristic would basically look something like this, right? Or if I would do it in a better way, oh, something like this, right? So here would be one of our, uh, you know, cutoff frequency points and the one a little later. Okay, so this would obviously be the uh, cutoff frequency of that of the high pass filter and this would be that for the low pass filter right there you go now with this uh, particular uh, sort of uh, you know uh, graph that we should expect for a band pass filter okay uh, whenever we just experimentally design it right we should get uh, some sort of pass band that would you know look something like this okay within this uh, particular area so this should be the pass band okay and there you go. And of course, here we would have the corresponding stop bands. That is stop band over here. And again, another stop band somewhere over here. Okay. So there you go. So that's exactly uh, what the uh, active band pass filter's characteristic is going to look. So you should always keep in mind that the band pass filter is such a filter that would just basically allow all the, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, certain electricals, I mean, input uh, electrical signals, okay, with frequencies in between that of the upper cutoff frequency of the low pass filter and the lower cutoff frequency of the high pass filter to appear at its output unattenuated, okay? And the rest of the frequency components outside this particular range, that is FH minus FL, uh, those frequency components, you know, outside of this particular uh, frequency range would just be attenuated by the filter circuit itself. So that's what the uh, band pass filter is all about because it just passes a band of frequencies within this particular range. 
All right. So keeping that in mind, uh, if we were to construct an active uh, bandpass filter, then we would need basically an active high pass and an active low pass filter stage. Now since the bandpass filter is basically an active filter, so it also would include uh, you know, um, an amplifier for each of the high pass and low pass uh, filter sections uh, along with passive filter stages. Okay, so let's just take a look at how it happens. Okay, so here we are. Now we're basically uh, going to use op amps over here as the amplifier, I mean the amplifying device. Okay, so we're just going to use op amps as the amplifying device. All right, in both the low pass, I mean high pass and the low pass filter stages. So there you go. Okay, so uh, in this case, what we are going to do is that we're just going to construct non inverting amplifiers out of the op amps. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down over here. We're basically going to uh, construct non-inverting amplifiers using the op amps, right? Now here we've just constructed the non-inverting amplifiers, okay, using uh, both the op amps. So uh, if we can just call this as R1 and this as RF1 over here. Okay, this will be RF2 and this will be uh, R... Okay, let's just call it R2, no problem. So here we are. Uh, all right. If we just wanted to make, uh, you know, the measure uh, of each of them, so let's just call it R1 over here also. So just denoting the fact that both these resistors would have the same value, and this is RF, and this one too as RF. So the feedback resistors also would have the, uh, you know, basically the same value. All right. So here we are with uh, the non-inverting amplifiers, and now we're going to add the uh, passive filter stages to each of these uh, non-inverting amplifiers. Okay. Okay, so here are the filter stages uh, complete, okay? So this part on the left, of course, is a first order. Okay, I'm just going to write that down over here. Sorry. Yeah. So this is basically a first order high pass filter, right? And this is, of course, the other stage on the right, that is. This one is a first order low pass filter. Okay, so now our basic job is to cascade them. So here we just cascade them, and there we have it, our entire bandpass filter circuit. Okay, so this is our entire uh, band active bandpass filter circuit that we have just, uh, you know, drawn over here. So this is our first order, okay, active bandpass filter circuit. All right. So it just takes a little time to write over here. So there you go. Okay, so now if we would just basically, uh, well, connect uh, some sort of uh, input signal source over here. So let's just connect it over here. Uh, it's a sinusoidal source, so it's a for, you know source of DC. Sorry, there AC. <laughs> There's my slip of tongue over there. Kind of don't mind. So this is an AC uh, signal generating source. Okay, and if we just call it uh, V in in this case, so it's going to provide you know variable uh, frequencies of input signals and now you could basically obtain the output voltage from that of this particular end right over here. Okay, so now we can see that the output of the high pass filter acts as the input to the low pass filter, okay, and the entire output is just obtained from over here. Now the order of the uh, band pass uh, filter that we've just obtained over here as you can see is also first order. Okay, so from here we can just get the idea that uh, if the low pass and high pass filter stages that you're using uh, to construct the band pass filter, if those low pass and high pass filter stages are of the first order, so you'll basically get a band pass filter which is also having a first order. Okay, and uh, if you're using second order uh, high pass and low pass filter stages on the other hand, then it's quite natural that your bandpass filter will also be known as a second order uh, bandpass filter. Okay, so things just go on this way. Right, so now if we just look at the circuit and uh, think about mathematically uh, treating it, then I might tell you that the overall gain of this entire circuit is just basically uh, well given by uh, AV, okay? So that's the overall gain, and it's basically equal to AFT, okay? divided by that of root over 1 plus FL by F whole squared, okay? And then this entire thing multiplied with, okay, so I'll just include the entire thing in a bracket, 
Okay, so that's the root over. Uh, I just pull it together, and then there's another uh, over here. That's a one plus that of f by f h. Okay, whole squared. So there you go. Okay, so in this uh, expression that uh, what you could get to see over here, this is basically a very important expression. Okay, speaking from the mathematical point of view of treating the circuit. So here the terms a v defines the overall gain of the entire bandpass filter circuit. I'll just write BPF in short. Okay, and here AFT, okay, here AFT is the total gain of the um, amplifier stages. Okay, so this is basically the total gain, I mean, or rather you can basically, uh, you know, call this as the total passband gain. So that way is just a better way to address it. Okay, so this is the total passband gain so that the frequency that will just be present in the passband will experience this magnitude of gain from that of the amplifiers. Okay, so there you go. And now on the other hand here, FL is of course the cutoff frequency. Uh, this is the lower cutoff frequency of the uh, high pass filter. So this is a lower cutoff frequency. Okay, lower cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. Okay, there you go. And F H, on the other hand, is the upper cutoff frequency of the low pass filter. So there you go. That's the upper cutoff frequency all right, of the low pass filter. So there you go. So now, on the other hand, uh, you have to keep in mind that the lower and the upper cutoff frequency, they're just both given uh, by the same uh, sort of expression over here. So speaking uh, from our circuit that we have over here, uh, well, FL, okay, that's the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter. So, since first is the high pass filter, we can see that it has the uh, C1 and R2, uh, you know, coupled together. I mean, you know, basically configured as the circuit, I mean, uh, as the high pass filter stage over here. So, here FL would be just given by 1 by 2 pi uh, of that of C1 and R2. So, there you go. And F H, on the other hand, that's the cutoff frequency of the uh, low pass filter. It was just given by 1 by 2 pi. Let's just take a look again. Okay, we have R3 and C2. So here's our low pass filter. Okay, so here we can see that R3 and C2 forms the filter stage. So there you go, R3 and C2. So there you go. So this is our basically the lower, I mean, sorry, there, the, um, yeah, the lower cutoff frequency of the high pass filter, and this is the upper cutoff frequency of that of the low pass filter. Now, whenever we just move on to the characteristic of this particular circuit, okay, so here's our characteristic, uh, and so at this, uh, well, at some point, uh, somewhere over here, uh, we're supposed to obtain the lower cutoff frequency, okay, of that of the high pass filter, okay, and well, at some point, over here, we're supposed to obtain the upper cutoff frequency, that's FH, of the uh, low pass filter, right? And uh, well, for both of these frequency points, we are going to have a corresponding gain, okay, uh, of equals to, well, AFT by that of root 2. That's the gain that's going to fall by root 2 times. So here you can see that AFT is obviously the uh, magnitude of the maximum gain that's provided by this particular circuit. So here we have the AFT mark on the y-axis where which is of course you know the axis for the gain. Okay and now if you just well plot the gain in uh, decibels okay then this entire uh, curve that you got over here uh, it will have a roll off okay so here you can see that uh, for the low pass filter stage we'll have this uh, you know uh, dip of the curve that's the slope of the curve over here that's basically the roll off so it's gonna have uh, I mean the curves gonna you know rise up and fall as well at the rate of 20 decibels per decade okay so if when the curve's just rising, it rises, I mean, it's, uh, you know, gain rises at the uh, rate of 20 decibels per decade, and when it's just falling, it also just falls at the rate of minus 20 decibels per decade, okay? So since it's a first-order bandpass filter, so that's why the slopes of the curve basically will rise and fall at the rate of 20 decibels per decade. Okay, so now you can see that, uh, well, at uh, exactly uh, somewhere between uh, that of uh, 
FL and FH will have basically a point okay uh, at which the gain would be the maximum so that's the maximum gain AFT would be just experienced by the frequency component uh, you know uh, somewhere between that of FL and FH so this particular point is just referred to as a center frequency okay we just refer to it as FC so here the center frequency FC is just given by uh, you know root over FL uh, and you know multiplied with that of FH so it's basically the product of FL and FH rooted uh, and then we just find out the value of the center frequency okay so this is basically the center frequency of the band pass filter that we got over here okay now uh, we should all keep in mind that band pass filters basically have a certain degree of bandwidth okay so here the bandwidth is just defined as the well as the uh, range of frequencies between that of FH and FL so it's basically FH minus that of FL so that's the bandwidth of uh, the particular band pass filter so this is the bandwidth okay so I just wrote it down in short as BW over here so this is the bandwidth of the band pass filter so again I'm just using a short form BPF for band pass filter and here uh, you can see that well uh, within FL and FH the range of frequencies that we have over here the filter will basically let these frequencies be amplified and passed off as uh, you know output signals with sufficient gain okay so it'll be just if amplified with sufficient gain and we just passed off from the output of this entire band pass filter circuit okay and those outside this range okay that that means the frequency components greater than that of FH and less than that of FL will be just uh, you know neglected or rather attenuated or suppressed by this particular filter so they'll just not experience that much of gain so here okay we have our pass band all right so that's the pass band of this band pass filter and on both the sides that's below FL and above FH we have our corresponding stop bands and there you go so here we have our stop bands okay so that's basically uh, what we have from our characteristics now looking at this uh, curve once more we see that well this particular curve has a uh, well uh, a wider uh, bandwidth okay so the curve could have been much narrower but it's not so narrow it it has uh, you know sufficiently wide bandwidth okay so here the bandwidth is sufficiently wide okay we can just basically write it down over here so bandwidth is basically sufficiently wide now the uh, response of such a filter well should look somewhat like this but the bandwidth can be made narrow or wide depending upon the Q factor or the quality factor of this particular uh, I mean uh, this particular circuit that we've just constructed over here okay so the quality factor of this circuit determines whether the bandwidth would be wide or narrow okay so uh, for if we just represent uh, the quality factor with the symbol Q over here then mathematically Q is basically equal to the center frequency divided by the bandwidth of the circuit or more so we can just basically write it as FC divided by that of FH minus FL so this is what the uh, mathematical expression for the quality factor basically looks like now the quality factor is basically uh, defined as basically as a uh, figure of uh, merit you know uh, that would define as to how sharp this curve okay how sharp uh, this curve or the frequency response could be okay so this is basically the Q factor is a unitless quantity as such okay so uh, speaking from design point of view if we have okay for this particular circuit okay that we have over here so if uh, the quality factor uh, would be you know uh, somewhat about uh, less than 10 or so then we'll basically have a wide band pass filter okay and if the quality factor well is greater than 10 then we will basically have a narrow band pass filter okay so there you go so there I'm just gonna write it down right so there you go so Q great less than 10 wide band pass filter Q less I mean Q greater than that of 10 we would basically have a narrow band pass filter so that's speaking from design point of view what we can basically have over here right so 
and here's of course the circuit of the second order uh, active bandpass filter so you can basically see that we have um, another RC stage at uh, both the second order low pass and the high pass filter sections okay so this entire uh, circuit over here is actually uh, the okay I'll just put a dotted line around this entire thing so this entire circuit that you can basically see over here is our uh, well active second order I mean I should write it first you know second order active band pass filter okay BPF in short so you can see that the uh, low pass and the high pass filters both are in a second order so I just mentioned over here with the uh, filter stages and all and uh, now of course uh, if we just look at uh, this uh, particular circuit then it's uh, mathematically treating it would be a little uh, different there be uh, you know certain changes in the expressions as such so now that's the overall gain uh, I mean the expression for the overall gain I'll just write down over here so this is the overall gain of the second order okay overall gain of that of okay gain of the second order uh, band pass filter all right and then uh, the cutoff frequencies okay so both the um, you know the low and high I mean the both the lower and the upper uh, cutoff frequencies of the corresponding filters okay I'm just gonna write it down over here so here FL that's the uh, lower uh, cutoff frequency of the high pass filter would be just you know given by in this case well, 1 by 2 pi multiplied with uh, well R1 R3 okay uh, sorry there a little bit of mistake it would be just the R values are a little bit different over here okay so we're gonna be having well uh, the product of well R2 R4 and then C1 and C3 all multiplied together so that's where we'll get the lower cutoff frequency be high pass filter and well the upper cutoff frequency of that of the low pass filter which is given by well 1 by 2 pi okay once again the same formula sorry there just be 1 by 2 pi and then well uh, C2 C4 okay this is the product C2 C4 and R3 R5 okay all the products just taken together so this is how the expression would change a bit and that's how its characteristic is supposed to look so here uh, on the lower end we're gonna have the lower uh, cut of frequency of the high pass filter and here this is gonna be the upper cut of frequency it's FH of the uh, low pass filter uh, and this is gonna be the pass band over here so I'm just gonna write down over here so this is gonna be the sorry there yeah pass band of this particular uh, filter that's the second order uh, band pass filter and here would be the corresponding stop bands okay on both the sides all right so other than that it's also gonna have a center frequency okay located somewhere over here that's denoted by FC and at this point the gain which is given by well AFT that's the maximum gain provided by the amplifiers and at uh, FL and FH both these points okay the gain would just fall to uh, AFT by that of root 2 okay that's 1 by root 2 of the maximum gain and here if the gain is just plotted on a decibel scale then of course you'll see that when it rises okay when the uh, curve over here rises then this rising rate is about uh, 40 decibels okay per decade meaning for every uh, 10 times increase in frequency the gain increases by uh, 40 decibels and when this curve just dips or falls away then also it has a uh, falling rate of uh, I mean the gain basically decreases at the rate of 40 I mean sorry there are minus 40 decibels per decade okay it is similar to the uh, curve okay that we had seen in the previous case right so uh, just in uh, in this uh, case since it's a second order uh, band pass filter so the rate at which the curve I mean uh, the rate of change of gain when the curve just rises or falls is just uh, double that of the first uh, case okay the first order filter I mean band pass filter that is so here also it has a certain degree of uh, well bandwidth uh, given by well FH minus that of FL and also has a Q factor Q equals to that of uh, the center frequency divided by that of bandwidth 
right? So it's basically the same, only uh, the difference is that the curves are rising and falling rate, the upper and the lower kind of frequencies respectively, and the change in uh, the overall gain expression over here that's being raised to the power of 4. Okay, each of these terms, AFL by F and F by FH, each of these terms raised to the power 4. Right, so with that we just come to uh, the end of this uh, tutorial video and uh, well, hope to catch you all in the next forthcoming uh, tutorial it is. So till then it's just going to be a short goodbye for now and uh, thanks for watching.